The ELAC Discovery is one of those devices that I follow to see its development. Recently the Rune Essential software and the ELAC firmware was heavily updated. And I mean very heavily. I have reviewed the ELAC Discovery DS S101G when it came to market and also described the first firmware update. You will see the links to those videos in the top right corner when you watch this video in a browser. Otherwise go to my YouTube channel where you will find them. For current owners the update is easily installed. When you start up the controller software on a tablet, smartphone or computer a message will pop up that an update is available. Simply click update all and it will start updating not only the discovery but also the remote application in use. Time to see what has changed. Although the basics of the user interface remain the same, clever functionality is added, the most impressive being the track screen. It is now designed as a spreadsheet like list where several columns can be added. You can search in any column and even enter separate search criteria in all active columns at the same time. A number of columns can be added or hidden and it all works like a breeze. To show this let's enter NUM in the track column filter field and PINK in the album artist column filter field. Immediately all comfortably NUM tracks by Pink Floyd are shown. Let's do a second one. First we empty the filter fields and enter Nocturne in the track field and Hara in the album artist filter field. Right away we see all Nocturnes by Adam Harasewicz that are in my collection. Now I can select them all and store this information in a playlist for future use. Also handy is the addition of the Path to the Music files. The same screen functionality is also used in the playlists. Rune Essentials has many ways to select music. You could use playlists but also bookmarks and the focus function. And then there is the tag function. Let's show this with a new album of the Fleet Foxes, Crack Up, that I downloaded from HiRSAudio.com. The description names a number of bands that might have been an inspiration to the Fleet Foxes. The Beach Boys, Steel Eye Span, The Zombies and Yes. So I tag them on the tag test and now I can immediately recall this group of bands by selecting this tag. Another example. I focused on all compositions by Lennon and McCartney and tagged them. And I tagged artists that worked with Alison Krauss. Now I can focus on bands that sound more or less like the Fleet Foxes, add a Lennon McCartney compositions to it and all artists that are in my library and worked with Alison Krauss. This I can now store as a bookmark and recall anytime instantly. This of course is a silly example, but you get the idea. Of course the tags can be global or limited to one user. Up till now you could have Rune Essentials organize your music, a feature that did more harm than good since it moved music on the hard disk to its own liking. That worked great when the metadata was fully correct, but if not an album could be scattered all over the place. So this option is no longer available. Rune Essentials now watches for changes in the maps containing the music files. It now is also possible to choose only the maps that contain music you want Rune Essentials to index. Previously you needed to add music to the catalogue by copying the music files to the folder Rune Essential uses. For shared volumes this was easy since it could be done over the network. But if you had your music on a USB drive that was directly connected to the discovery, you needed to take that drive to the computer, copy the files and connect it back on to the discovery. This is no longer needed. On your computer 
start the Rune Essentials program and drag the files or the map containing the files on it. The files will be copied to the Rune Essentials map using the Artist Album Convention. Deleting music was already possible from the Edit menu, so now you can maintain your music collection over the network. With the exception of the music file backup, of course. It is now possible to create links between artists, tracks, compositions and composers. Furthermore, the file tags Work, Part and Personnel are now recognized, further improving the metadata. The import of metadata can be highly personalized. If you want your metadata for the genre field to be used, no problem. Prefer your album naming over that of Rune Essentials? Easy. For any field you can set what info should be used. If an artist or a composer has two entries, for instance Peter Tchaikovsky and Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, you can now combine those to one composer. The algorithm that should automatically detect double entries has also been improved, meaning that double entries are less likely to occur anyway. One of the things people missed in CDs was the cover information. Rune Essentials now has the closest experience to the vinyl cover. Cover pics and PDFs in the same directory as the music are shown. Let's look at Crack Up by the Fleet Foxes again. It comes with a PDF and when copied to the music directory it shows up in Rune Essentials, not only with all the tracks and crack metadata, but also with the remark one PDF. When you click on it, an option is shown to open the PDF. Simply click it and the booklet will be opened in the PDF viewer of your computer or for instance in Safari on the iPad. When you first use the Discovery, it will analyze your music, add loudness and dynamic information and add loads of metadata. This can be a lengthy process taking one or more days depending on the number of albums you have. Then you might add or create playlists, collections using the bookmarks or tag functions, add metadata and illustrations to those albums that are not recognized by Rune Essentials and so on. All this information is stored in an SSD-like memory inside the discovery. If something would go wrong there, you would lose all this data unless there is a backup. So now an automatic backup function is added to Rune Essentials. When you use Rune Essentials 1.3 for the first time, you will be guided through the setup, but you can also set or change the backup settings later on. The backups can be stored on a drive or share, on the Dropbox or on both. You will find the backup settings in the settings menu on the backups. Some things are really easy. But please do realize that this backup function only backs up the metadata and not the music files. That needs to be done using a backup program on a computer. It is now possible to combine both analog and digital outputs in one group. They can also be combined with other rune ready endpoints while keeping in sync. Furthermore, the discovery can now also function as one or more endpoints for the full version of rune. The discovery could already use airplay speakers and devices as endpoints and now Sonos is added. So whether you now play with the AirPlay device, the Sonos streamer or speaker, Blue Sound streamer or speaker, when you buy a Discovery, those devices will not become obsolete and can be used for instance in the study or the kitchen. Or you can make one of your kids happy with it. And since Rune Essentials on the Discovery is fully RAD compliant, it can also drive Rune ready DACs by for instance MQB, PS Audio, Brinkman and many others. A big change is made in the part that takes care of the leveling of the music. The current level detection circuit follows the EBU R128 standard that was a result of a study to get more uniform levels on TV stations. 
It is now also implemented for radio and serious streaming services also use it. When I find the time to study it more deeply, I will report back on this and the, on the coupled LOVES standard. Let's for now conclude that it really does a good job. Even tidal streams have the same level, which might indicate that tidal also uses R128. The first time after the update to Rune Essentials 1.3, your complete catalogue will be analysed all over again, but now using the R128 specification analyzer. So expect your discovery to be hard at work until all tracks are analysed again. At the same time the dynamic range is calculated. Since analysing accord, according to R128 means measuring the music energy over time, having that data you can easily calculate the dynamic range of a track or album. And that's great f info for those fighting the loudness war. Take for instance Famous Blue Raincoat by Jennifer Warnes, a well known audiophile album. I re reported already earlier that the original CD version from 1987 sounds better than the 2007 remaster with the blue insert and that is sold at hi-fi shows for silly money. The original version shows a dynamic range of 11 while the 2007 remaster shows a dynamic range of 9. Now I'm not saying that the dynamic range is the only reason the remaster sounds less, but it can't be positive either. There are more innovations, like the further improved RAD protocol that provides precise synchronization between endpoints. Improved database engine that optimizes the database for even quicker responses, an improved search engine and so on. ELEC claims improved overall speed improvements and that might be the case, but I already found the previous software to be blazing fast, so the difference is more or less academic. The update is free and does offer far more options for organizing and retrieving your music the way you want it. It's an affordable way to work with the Rune library software and the hardware offers good value. I will keep track of new developments so stay in contact by subscribing to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the link. If you have a question, post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.